Hello everyone and welcome to the news of Shiluk TV. Today's stories include Khartoum State adopts security measures on anniversary of June the 30th. Al Burhan affirmed that peace is top priority for transitional government. African leaders agreed to postpone filling of the Ethiopian Dam and to resume talks. The acting wali of Khartoum State and head of the State Security Committee, Dr. Yusuf Adai, has issued a statement on outcome of the Security Committee's meeting regarding the celebration of the June 30th anniversary. The State Security Committee has mapped out a tight security plan that included several axes, through which it stressed the full coordination between all security and regular services. The statement indicated that the plan mainly serves the achievement of security and safety for the homeland and the citizens, stressing that the security and regular organs are on standby and in full readiness as regards providing information on intruders' plans to drag the celebrations into an abyss of sabotage and chaos. To achieve this plan, the State Security Committee has taken the following decisions. The complete closure of bridges without exceptions on the days of June 29th and 30th, besides the closure of the crossings to and from the states. Closure of the markets, shops and services in order not to be vulnerable to the targeting of the intruders. President of the Transitional Sovereign Council, Lieutenant General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan, has affirmed the strong will of the transitional government to achieve peace, which represents a top priority. During his meeting on Saturday with the delegation of South Sudan Mediation, headed by the advisor of South Sudan President Tod Gulwak, and the delegation of the Armed Struggle Movement, Lieutenant General Al-Burhan expressed the readiness of the institutions of the transitional period to address all the problems facing the negotiation process. The rapporteur of South Sudan Mediation for Peace in Sudan, Dr. Diom Tok, said that the delegation has briefed the President of the Transitional Sovereign Council on progress of the peace negotiations hosted by Juba and part of the obstacles facing the negotiations, adding that the delegation of the mediation and armed struggle movements reached good results during their meetings. <clears throat> Rebel negotiators said they are in Sudanese capital to demonstrate to those who cast doubt on the ongoing negotiations in Juba that the process has achieved great progress in the road for peace in Sudan. The three negotiators are Yasser Arman, Ahmed Tugut, who represent the groups of the Sudanese Revolutionary Front, and Mohamed Bashir, representing the Sudan Liberation Movement of Arkuminawi. Ahmed Tugut, chief negotiator of the Justice and Equality Movement, said there are those who say that these parties do not express the cause correctly. Others say that there are parties absent from the negotiating table, while some others say that what is happening in Juba will not achieve peace. A delegation of the Central Bureau of the Forces of Freedom and Change has met with a delegation of the Revolutionary Front for the negotiations, which arrived in Khartoum, accompanying a team of South Sudan mediation to discuss outstanding issues in the negotiation and dialogue process between the different components of the transitional power. The meeting was characterized by serious discussion on the peace issues and completion of the tasks of the revolution, besides the challenges facing the transitional period. The meeting has appreciated the courageous step taken by the revolutionary delegation to come to Khartoum to discuss the outstanding issues and to prove its seriousness and will reach a just peace agreement. The Revolutionary Front delegation praised the positive interaction of the components of the transitional power with peace issues, stating that the dialogues in which the Front involved sent positive messages on the possibility of a breakthrough in outstanding issues. The Prime Minister, Dr. Abdullah Hamdok, has received a report on the performance of the committee investigating in the violations that accompanied the breaking up of the sit-in before the general command of the armed forces and the states. The report indicating that the investigation is proceeding well, as the committee heard the testimonies of more than 3,000 witnesses and received more than 150 video recordings, which currently under examination. The committee demanded a number of assistance to continue its work in the required way, referring to some difficulties facing the investigations, which include the full lockdown in Khartoum and the states that the committee need to access due to the corona pandemic and the procedures accompanying this lockdown, a matter that affected the progress of work.
An African mini-summit agreed on Friday to resume talks between Egypt, Ethiopia and Sudan on the Renaissance Dam and to postpone the first filling of its reservoir until an agreement is reached between the three countries. The agreement was announced after a video conference meeting convened by President Cyril Raffosa of the Republic of South Africa and chairperson of the African Union, including the leaders of the three countries and the AU Bureau of Heads of State and Government. Ethiopia's Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed, Sudanese Prime Minister Abdullah Hamdok and the chairperson of the African Union Commission Moussa Faki took part in the meeting. In a statement released in Khartoum, Hamdok cabinet said that the meeting agreed to resume technical discussions to reach an agreement within the two weeks as it was proposed by the Ethiopian side. The Eritrean president Isiasi Aforgi Saturday concluded a three-day visit to Sudan. During his visit to Khartoum, the Eritrean president has met with the president of the Transitional Sovereign Council, Lieutenant General Al Burhan, the council vice president, Lieutenant Mohammed Hamdan Dagalou, and the Prime Minister Dr. Abdullah Hamdok, and discussed progress of the bilateral relations and means of strengthening them further, issues of mutual concern to the two countries, and the efforts for boosting peace in the region. The World Bank approved a $35 million in emergency fund for coronavirus response operations in Sudan, said its president on Thursday during a virtual Sudan partnership conference. In April 2020, the World Bank excluded Sudan from a list of 25 countries that received some $1.5 billion, triggering a call by UN Secretary General to grant Sudan exceptional support to confront the COVID-19 pandemic. We expect to finance an emergency health response to the COVID-19 in July. Combining resources from trust funds that the World Bank administers, we will provide about $35 million in financing for a project to prevent and detect and respond to COVID-19, Malpa said. Reminding headlines. Khartoum State adopts security measures on anniversary of June the 30th. Al-Burhan affirmed that peace is top priority for transitional government. African leaders agreed to postpone filling of Ethiopian Dam and to resume talks. Well, that was everything for tonight. Thank you for following and see you tomorrow.